Andros was the tie is the latest unit with the new party buff, normal attack plus 70%. So together with her massive assets, this 70% will offer a great boost to your team because it's 20% more than your standard melee range damage buff as well as 20% more than your standard elemental attack buff. So will Rosetta be as powerful as she sounds on paper or will she just fade into mediocrity upon release? Without further ado, let us analyze in today's video on how worthy is massive Huntress Rosetta potentially. Okay, so if we take a look at her story itself, Rosetta was actually the executive and founding member of the crime syndicate Reservoir Snakes, which is the organization where Arabelle and Elvira is in, so they all have this similarity of holding guns. And in her earlier days as a combatant, she was actually sort of uh, kidnapped to a place known as the Wolf's Belly together with the boss of Reservoir Snake based on this. So there's this unit or this person known as Olivia, who shared the same ideal as Rosetta in her early life and they decided to leave the Wolves Belly together to create their new gang known as the Reservoir Snakes. So initially, the gang was formed to protect each other but as the Reservoir Snakes grew, right, Rosetta and Olivia began to argue about the guild's operations. So Rosetta wanted to protect the weak while Olivia considered the weak as useless beings who endangered the organization. So in order to lead the gang down the right path, Rosetta challenges Olivia, which is her close friend and the leader of the gang to a duel. So eventually Rosetta was defeated and she left the Reservoir Snake. So when she left, right, Olivia started to change the gang's rule into what we know it is as of today. So from this paragraph, we can tell that there will be another unit known as Olivia coming up and Olivia is the gang leader behind Reservoir Snakes which is like greatly mentioned within the story itself so that is for the gang portion and in the story itself it also mentioned that Rosetta who roamed endlessly after leaving the gang saves Elvira who was chased by that very gang so she eventually trained out Elvira and like uh, made her really shock so in a sense we can say that rosetta is elvira's master or teacher in terms of her gun usage and she's known for many things within the storyline right there's a lot she's a massive drunkard she's very good at drinking and she's also famous by the police for many different reasons so i'll leave hundreds of zeta storytelling on the board so that you guys can read it for a bit and with that let us move on to the next part of her introduction so let us next look at the stats distribution as well as the skill set for Rosetta. So if we take a look at her stats, stats wise I think she's very powerful. Having one of the higher attack, 1473 at max level, which is very close to Andreas, which is I think 15 something. So yeah, 1539. So in terms of attack, Rosetta is probably one of the highest in the hero pool. She also has a pretty decent HP, 44,000 for a range unit, it's very decent and a HP defense stat of uh, 287. So 287, not the best, but I'll say it's serviceable compared to like some of the glass cannons. So if you look at Cloud, Cloud has a defense 118 with the EX weapon, it's around 200 plus as well. Then we have uh, units like uh, obviously Andres, if you compare to Andres, only 187. So in terms of defensive capability, Rosetta is pretty decent as well. And she has a new party buff, normal attack damage plus 70% and a skill damage plus 6%. So for those of you guys who do not know what this normal attack damage means, it means this box over here. So everything within this normal attack box is going to get buffed. So if you put her in the party units like Andres, right, units like uh, AA72, right, units like uh, Carol, right, all their normal attack ability from the first text to the second part of the text, they all get buffed by this party buff. So this party buff has a lot of combo potential. And moving forward, there's a possibility that the developers will focus more towards this normal attack part of the game and make units even more powerful and hyper offensive. So this buff is actually, I'll say like a crazy buff because 70%, it's even bigger than the usual 50% buff. So the amount of combo potential, the amount of damage boost that this unit can provide for the whole hero pool is just crazy big so other than buffing the secondary ability of the normal attack obviously by buffing your normal attack the games are going to go faster and units are going to hit a lot harder so that's one thing that this unit can provide just based off this new party buff 
Then next, we take a look at her normal attack. So her normal attack while fire fires bullet at enemies to inflict range damage. So this bullet is very slow. And the thing about this wildfire is uh, as much as, you know, she might sound like a sort of a, you don't really need a lot of brain kind of unit. You kind of need to manage her wildfire ability because she she doesn't really recharge her bullet immediately after she uses it like units like Nari or Cloud. So you finish up all the bullets before you can actually recharge it. So the recharge time is a little bit uh, slow. I would say that it's super slow but it takes a bit of time so usually what you want to do is combine the first ability wildfire with the roll and gun ability so the roll and gun allows her to make evasive maneuvers and rapidly fires at the furthest enemy to inflict range damage and swiftly reloads so she has this ability known as additional bullets in her exclusive weapon right so this additional magazine or additional bullet effect will be added to her 4th, 5th and 6th bullet. So this is when she normal attack, there will be a bullet sign on the top of her head. So when this sign appear, you can use your roll and gun. She will fire the remaining bullets and you can use roll and gun again. So this will fully reload her cartridge. And I think for this part, I think the combo is very straightforward. So you fire your wild gun or wild fire until a certain point where you see the buff and hold it and use your roll and gun to maximize the damage output that this unit can provide. Okay, so next, if you look at her chain skill ability, it's quite straightforward. 410% DPS as range damage. So it's a skill that deals massive damage. 410 is pretty big. And the special ability quick draw. So on reload, her attack is increased by 20% for 3 seconds. And when she's using the roll and gun ability, her defense is increased by 20% for 3 seconds. So in terms of tankiness, I won't say that she's the strongest in terms of tanking up because her ability doesn't provide damage reduction. And in the current state of the meta game, I think units that don't have damage reduction cannot be claimed to be the tankiest because everybody just hits so hard. So you need to be able to effectively reduce the incoming damage to be claimed as tanky. But in terms of her abilities i think it's quite interesting because it's a combination of working around your load mechanic your reload mechanic as well as your roll and gun ability so even though her ability might sound very brainless as a whole she does have a bit of combo potential that you want to use in order to maximize your damage so i posted the list of combos you can do with her very simple one i'll link it in the card above so if you guys want to see it just uh, click on the card on the top right hand side of the video so next one we look at her ex weapon so other than providing the standard buffs 10 percent crit chance is quite big it offers this additional magazine effect which i talk about so you want to fire your wildfire you don't want to hold the attack button because once you go over the buff it will disappear so let's say if the additional magazine appears on the fourth bullet and you shoot out the fourth bullet the buff is gone so this will actually slow down your combo and mess up so that's something to take note of and other than providing this additional magazine effect it also allows the uh, gun or the roll and gun ability to be refreshed immediately so this ex weapon is a must for rosetta in order to use this combo in order to maximize her damage potential so this also allows her to decrease damage taken by 40 percent when she's using her exclusive weapon skill known as q zone so q zone is an ex weapon that has a very low cooldown six seconds but it's uh, very hard to chain with it because based on my personal take you probably need three or four skills in the arena to actually chain your enemy unless your enemy stand on the spot then you'll probably take about three skills two skills so that is uh, something to take note of like q zone is not really a skill that you use to chain your enemy like this unit is not really a chain skill unit based on just the party buff alone this unit is a normal attack just shoot your opponent down and do as much damage as possible so do take note of uh, this as how she's used when she's officially released so moving towards the colosseum i think rosetta is a very powerful unit in the game mode although she doesn't really see a lot of use in the rankings right now but i do think that moving forward as we get more and more powerful uh, units that 
benefits from her buff in the whole meta game, she's gonna see more use. So right now, the list of good units that she can combo with is obviously Lina with her fireball, right? Units like Pavati with her wire, units like Marina with her hook throws, and there's a bunch of them out there. So just uh, you guys are free to sort of like test out and see which one works. But just of these few units alone, she has great potential with them. And she greatly boosts your normal attack as well in terms of damage output. So if there's one shortcoming for her party buff is it doesn't really benefit her skill damage, which is what some teams are playing, right? The skill damage comp. So you got to finish your opponent before they unleash their combos. And that's one thing that I think you have to think of when you kind of use her. Because you're going to rely on your normal attacks more. And you kind of want to build a team around that in order to benefit from this buff massively. So in terms of the unit as a whole, I think her AI is pretty decent. The way she stands in the Colosseum and the way she uses her roll and load allows you to target the back lines, which is an amazing tool for Colosseum as usual. So that's why I think this unit has great potential, even though I don't see a lot of use yet. But moving forward, she'll probably become stronger along the way with more units with better and stronger normal attack mechanics. Okay, so moving towards the arena side, I kind of have a little bit of issue with her because on one hand, I think her party buff is amazing to spice up the arena because she offers like a bit of boost to existing powerful units with secondary abilities in their normal attack. So good units like Marina, units like Carol, Arena, Lina, they all benefit from this party buff and it's amazing because you can put her in multiple team comps and it greatly buffs all these old existing units. But on the other hand, because her party buff just makes range damage dealing even stronger, right? So in case you guys do not know how the party buff math work in Guardian Tales, the stats are multiplicative. So let's say if you have a 50% elemental buff, you have a 50% range buff. That is a 1.5 times 1.5, which gives you 2.25 damage output. So if you throw in a 1.7 times normal attack, it means that you have nearly four times the damage output just based on party buff alone. So that is as good as a crit buff. So it's also, if you look at it another way, you can also use like either the elemental buff together with the normal attack buff, together with a crit buff to get 2.5 times damage times two that's five times if you crit so like the amount of damage boost just off this party buff alone is massive and i think the most meta way to play will probably be a full damage comp so although this unit does perform really well in range teams you can also slot her in hyper offensive melee team as well right you can put her in like the earth rule team so rule together with her and maybe one other damage dealer in the melee spectrum you're still gonna hit super hard like so that's just how good this party buff is in my honest take and it, it greatly speeds up the game like like i mentioned in many of my videos i think if you don't have stats you're gonna be beaten down by pure stats and rosetta just makes it even harder for you to win if you are losing in terms of stats so that's why i i think this unit is kind of troublesome in my take and she's definitely going to be really powerful in arena without a doubt it's just how you build her although as a standalone unit i think she's kind of clunky like her attacks is quite slow and like in terms of comboing right in garden tales doing combos in arena is just not as optimal as just straight up attacking so in most cases right the best way to play her will just be just normal attacking don't bother too much about your weapon skill chaining or like doing your roll and load counting and stuff but you can do it to maximize her damage output so that's what i think about her in arena very very powerful unit probably gonna be meta and very game breaking in my honest opinion now moving towards the pv perspective i think andres is one of the best partner with rosetta so if you put them two together you can slot them in in nearly any team right so for the water side you have oka which also has the mine ability also benefiting from the party buff for the outside you have tinia the arrow ability also benefits from this buff itself so there will be more combo potential right there's also okma 
with the gun ability that deals damage as well so there's a lot of combo potential you can do with her even in raid as well to greatly boost your team damage and obviously boosting your team's normal attack is sometimes better than having a skill damage boost because you only use weapon skill that many times in raid but you are constantly dealing normal attacks to the target so having this buff will greatly increase your damage for raid so she's gonna be good there as for the other game modes i think in terms of how this unit works out she's definitely better controlled if you are manually using her but it's also very complicated to fully maximize her damage under the different condition because you need to take note of the additional bullet buff you need to take note of your short weapon skill cooldown even though it doesn't change so easily but it still does quite a bit of damage and you need to take note of your cooldown of your roll and load so it could be a bit complicated and she doesn't really have a lot of aoe ability other than her weapon skill so in terms of maps where you need massive wave clearance she might not be the best but if you're just using her to boost the damage of your other aoe attackers like cloud cloud is amazing right the damage boost that cloud get is amazing or you're just using her with units like uh, uh with big massive aoe normal attacks then i think she's definitely worth it there as well so overall a very powerful unit for pve may not be the best but definitely very usable under many circumstances so below are some reasons to pull or invest in Huntress Rosetta. So how worthy is Rosetta potentially? She's definitely going to be a meta unit in multiple perspectives with massive combo potentials moving forward as more units with stronger normal attacks get released to the game. So we'll definitely see her being used, right? Depending on how powerful she actually is based on the usage by other whales she's gonna be appearing everywhere and could also be a camel level track so it's a good thing that she's good but it could also be a bad thing because she's gonna be very annoying everywhere and you have to pull for her in order to be able to play multiple game modes so we shall see right she's definitely gonna be usable but how strong will she be at pick i'm not too sure but uh, we shall let time tell itself so overall i think rosetta is a very worthy unit to pull for if you want a hyper offensive arena team to rely less on weapon skill and just normal attack your way to victory or you simply want a unit that is versatile in team building while boosting your overall damage so very very useful unit so do pull for her if you want one of these unit based on the description i mentioned so yep that's pretty much it for this video let me know down in the comment section below whether or not you approve for rosata and thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe in order to see more content from the channel and i'll see you guys again in my next video bye guys